If you've been on Netflix lately, you've probably heard about Netflix's Choose Your Own Adventure movie. And so today, I want to talk about that, if that's alright. Oh, sorry. Yeah, those choices don't do anything. YouTube removed annotations. I'm Brian Comlacord, and this is my review of Black Mirror Bandersnatch. As I said at the top, Black Mirror Bandersnatch is a choose-your-own-adventure movie produced by Netflix as part of the Black Mirror franchise. You can choose what choices the character makes, and that ultimately decides the outcome of the story. This isn't an entirely new idea. We had choose-your-own-adventure goosebumps books, branching RPGs with different endings. We even used to have annotations on YouTube. I'm gonna keep bringing it up. However, Bandersnatch stands apart from other interactive content. For one thing, it's on Netflix, so it's widely accessible to mostly everyone. For another, it's part of Black Mirror, so it's expected to meet a certain standard of quality and a certain tone in general. And Bandersnatch definitely matches the quality and tone of a normal Black Mirror episode. Like other episodes of Black Mirror, Bandersnatch is grim and upsetting. Though in this episode, the technological focus of the story seems to be on the interactive medium rather than something in the world itself. Each viewing or playthrough of Bandersnatch focuses on Stefan, a 19-year-old game designer in the year 1984. Stefan, or Stefan, however you want to say it, is about to show off his game at a game company called Tuckersaw. His game is adapted from his favorite book, Bandersnatch. And Bandersnatch is a choose-your-own-adventure book, and so Stefan's game is a choose-your-own-adventure game. And on Stefan's big day, when he plans to show off his game, you choose his serial and his commute music, and then you're introduced to Mohan Tucker, the boss of Tuckersaw, and also Colin Rittman, a famous game designer that Stefan is really a big fan. He also holds a monopoly on the eyebrow industry. Why don't you leave the girls alone, man? What are you gonna do about the eyebrows? <laughs> After demoing his game, Stefan is asked whether he'd like to join the company or not. The choice is ultimately kind of a false choice, because saying yes ends things very quickly, the game doesn't do very well, and Stefan feels the urge to go back. So, in a way, choosing no is sort of the only way to progress the story. Being forced in one direction in an interactive game is sort of lame, but I think Bandersnatch found out a cool way to do it. The film loops in on itself when you come to a conclusion, offering you the choice to go back and change something you've done. Also in the process, they show you a cut of the things you've done before, but rather than show you the whole movie to that point in its entirety, they show you a quicker cut of everything that's happened so far. But in order to leave even more options up to your disposal, Netflix changed the game yet again. Because in certain instances, choosing the first option and following that to a conclusion, failing, going back, and then choosing the second option the next time, can sometimes have a different result than choosing the second option in the first place. For instance, in this scenario, if you choose the first option, fail, go back, and then choose to not work at Tuckersoft, you're treated to a new set of dialogue in which Colin and Stefan both seem to know that they've done this before. Sort of like a Groundhog Day situation. This adds an even more meta layer to the story, which is already a choose-your-own-adventure story about choosing your own adventure, where the characters seem to know that there are parallel universes or variations on what they're doing. This theme of meta-ness is largely present throughout the entire story because Bandersnatch is sort of obsessed with the fact that it's interactive content. In fact, as Stefan becomes more and more obsessed with creating the perfect choose-your-own-adventure game, he starts to wonder if he's lost agency himself. It's funny because he's right. You're the one choosing for him. And I'm not just talking about how you're picking for him in real life as you watch the Netflix movie. I'm talking about within the story, you're making decisions for him and he's aware of it. Stefan feels an ever-present and omnipotent force that pushes him to do the things that you want him to do. He feels your choices. In most interactive content, this is a weird sort of tacky thing to do. Again, Bandersnatch makes it something that fits within the story. The reason this part of the story feels natural on screen is because they've kind of established it already. There's some foreshadowing earlier on about about the original author of the Bandersnatch novel who went crazy, thought he lost his free will, and then chopped up his wife. Stefan also has a moment where he feels like he's lost agency. This is where we'll be getting into spoilers. In a pivotal scene, Stefan breaks down in front of his computer screen while designing the game and asks who it is that's controlling his life. You can answer in multiple different ways. In fact, you can tell him the truth, that you're just a dude watching Netflix. The Netflix prompt leads to two of the five main endings. In one, Stefan is an actor who's forgotten that he wasn't Stefan and has also lost agency, and in the other one, you comically fight the therapist and then kick your dad in the crotch. Both of these sort of work in a different way. The actor ending feels more like a real ending, but neither of them feel like a true ending. To get those actions, we have to go back and choose a different option. If you go back when Stefan is breaking down in front of the computer and you choose the little logo, 
for Bandersnatch, then you're eventually pushed in another direction with this story. When you go down this path, Stefan will eventually murder his father, whether you want him to or not. And once Stefan's done that, he will ask you what to do. If Stefan buries his father, someone will eventually come around looking for Stefan, and the game will be finished by someone else. Because Stefan will go to prison for murdering his father. If Stefan wants to properly finish the game, he has to chop up his father's body. He'll finish the game in time for Christmas with his father's head staring at him from the dresser, but at least the game got a 5 out of 5 on British IGN. To me, in a lot of ways, this feels like the realest ending that there is. Because during the course of the story, you see the author going to madness, and then you can see that in Stefan as well. To top it off, the film shows you during the credits that Colin Rittman's daughter, Pearl Rittman, Daddy's little legacy, has become a game designer who is designing a remake of Bandersnatch. And the project is taking its toll on her too. The cycle continues. But the beauty of Bandersnatch's storytelling is that there's also another storyline you can pick out if you're paying attention to different parts of the story. I think most people will feel inclined to dig into Stefan's past when he's at his therapist's office, and the film really pushes it on you. If you say no to learning about his past the first time, the therapist will ask you a second time. You can avoid learning about it, but even when you fail the game, the game will want you to go back and learn more. When you do dig into Stefan's past, you learn that his mother died in a train wreck when he was young. I guess she wasn't a superhero. If his father hadn't taken his stuffed white rabbit toy, she would have gotten on the right train and she wouldn't have died. But if Stefan talks to Colin at a certain point of the story, he can butterfly affect his past by going through the looking glass to find the white rabbit. And when he finds the white rabbit, he can choose to go on the train with his mother. But this isn't back to the future. This isn't some nice friendly story. This is Black Mirror, dude. Everything has to be sad in Black Mirror. Going on the train means you've choo-choo chosen for Stefan and his mother to both die. This causes a ripple effect that kills Stefan in the present in his therapist's office. Honestly, the nicest ending of all the endings in Black Mirror Bandersnatch. He's reunited with his mother, who was the original inspiration for the game. Both the ending of killing your father and chopping up the body and the ending of going with your mom on the train seem like the real endings to this story. Narratively, they both work depending on what part of the story connects with you more as a viewer. For me, I like the perfect game ending where you kill your father and chop up the body because that feels like the way the story was going for me. But in all honesty, the other ending also works if you talk to Colin a lot and it's generally a more appealing ending. Honestly, I haven't even covered all the narratives here. In one storyline, it turns out that your father is a spy who's designed your whole life and killed off the character of your mother so that you will have experienced trauma as a child. There's also an ending where you can listen to your therapist and take your medicine. The game's not great, but nobody dies. But also, that's not really as satisfying as a story. There are so many different possibilities in Bandersnatch. Normally, I don't write a script for a movie review, but this isn't a normal movie. This movie takes about an hour and a half to watch if you're just watching it through once. But I've seen pretty much every clip there is to see, and so we watched it for about six hours across two different sessions. Bandersnatch is a truly compelling and innovative film. Netflix had to come up with whole new technologies to even make this possible, and it's really interesting to see how they've done it and what they've done. This isn't the best story ever told or anything like that, but Black Mirror Bandersnatch is its truly interesting. And Black Mirror is the perfect franchise to take on an interactive film because of its focus on technology in all of its episodes. Honestly, this is the only series that could tell this story, and this is the only medium that could tell this story. I think without it being an interactive thing, this story wouldn't be interesting at all. But with interaction, you're part of the story, and it really draws on that and uses that. It's central to the plot, that it's interactive. Because of that, I think it's an unparalleled experience. It's dark, you shouldn't let kids watch it, but I think every adult should really see what this kind of content is like, and see what Netflix has innovated here. I can't really say buy it because it's streaming only. It is worth buying a subscription to Netflix for at least one month to participate in. I'll say that much about it. So I guess that's very similar to buy and own it. Thank you for watching. If you guys have any thoughts about Bandersnatch, leave them in the comments below. And uh, of course, if you have any movie recommendations, things that you would like me to watch and talk about, then go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Bye, McCordians.